once there were a few disciples who were going with their guru on the way. And while going on the way, they saw two neighbors fighting with each other. And they were not far from each other. They were very near to each other. And they were shouting and yelling to each other. In a very noise, in a very loud voice. And the guru and the disciples they asked one of them asked the guru, like, why are they shouting aloud when both the parties are near to each other? They can hear them. Why are they shouting? And Guru is replying, because their heart is now controlled by ego, pride, anger. And also disagreement. And that's why, though they are near to each other, they are not able to hear each one's voice. And that's why they are speaking it loud, thinking that they will be heard. But at the same time, the Guru replies, saying, if in that heart where anger is resided, Love will take place of anger. Humbleness and mercy will take place in spite of ego, egocentric behavior. Then the scenario will be different. When love takes place instead of anger in our hearts, then we speak to each other in a soft voice. We need not have to sound alarm. We talk to each other in a very soft way. We smile. Sometimes words are not needed. When we are growing in love, even by looking at other states, we understand what they mean to say to us. And that is the beauty of love is about. Today's theme is our law, love for others should be without any limit. Like the love of God. Our love for others should be without any limit. Like the love of God. When I was going through the theme, I found it personally very difficult. Can I ever compare my love with the love of God that how about how God has shown his love to humankind by sending his only son, by addressing with each sin that we are committing on daily basis by not punishing us the way we should be punished according to our evil ways. But every time he has forgiven, every time he has beside us, many times we have left him. But when we pray and when we call upon his name, Lord, where are you? Maybe the sweet voice reply may come. I have not left you. I am with you. Maybe you have left me at a certain point of time. As we have uh, read the first scripture, which is from Genesis chapter 50, the story of Joseph, we see the end part of Joseph, the end scene that the author is presenting before us. What happened to Joseph and his uh, fellow brothers? Joseph, in his lifetime, was not he went to. Because of his own brothers, he was separated from a loving father. He loved him the most, gave him the best clothes, and he cherished his presence. And now, because of his brothers, Joseph had to be separated. Secondly, he was rejected by his own brothers. Because, I saw, because he saw a dream, and in his dream, he said that all the brothers may have to obey him or bow down before him. The symbolism of the of this dream was like that. And that's why they thought that he, so he is the one who is taking all the love from the father. At the same time, he's maybe having the opinion that he will rule over us. His brothers, they threw him into a pit. They sold him 
to the strangers. And Joseph was taken and treated as a bonded bond slave. That is not only the end of the story, but after going to Egypt, he was blamed in the house of Potiphar by Potiphar's wife. He was taken to jail in a false accusation. He was cheated by the cupbearer because when the cupbearers were inside the jail and when Joseph was able to interpret and tell them the dream that they have seen, the interpretation of the dream, they promised that we will certainly go to the king and we will plead for you so that you are out, so that we see that you are out of jail. But they did not keep their promise. He was forgotten, forgotten by the cup bearers. He was forgotten by his own brothers. Maybe his own father also, thinking that the wild beasts, they have consumed him. But in all this, though everyone has forgotten Joseph, but God has never forgotten him. God, God's eyes was always upon Joseph. And that's why here in this place, as we see the conversation between Joseph and his, and his brothers, we discover here something very meaningful. Because the brother of Joseph, after the death of Jacob, their father, they thought that Joseph will no more be kind to us. He will take revenge. He will remember everything worse that we have done for him. And that's why they were afraid. They were scared of uh, going near to Joseph. What they did, they did not go to Joseph. They sent their messenger, asking that messenger, go and tell this message that the father of Joseph is now already dead. And we still need help from Joseph. And when Joseph came to know about all the things that had happened, he came forward and he said, what did he say? He said, I'm not in the place of God to take judgment. I'm not in the place to, to, to take an account from you. I wonder, when we don't have anything, or when we are weak, when somebody who is powerful or who is uh, ruling over us is suppressing us, and that time if you say that I forgive the person who is suppressing me, that may not be so much meaningful. But when you are in power, you have the complete authority, and the person who has done wrong to you is just before you. You have every possible authority and power to take revenge and bring judgment upon that person. But still you would say, I forgive you for the Lord's sake. That is the real forgiveness. What Joseph is saying, it is God who is worthy to forgive people. I am not the judge. And again, he is bringing out something very positive. Saying that maybe it was the will of God that God sent me here to Egypt so that all of us will survive. You thought something evil for me, but God made it or God meant it for the good. From our own heart, we need certainly the help of God. And Joseph had the help of God to show that love to that love to his own fellow brothers. If I as an individual, I am saying that I have forgiven, I am loving, probably I am not, not telling you the truth. It is only through the help of God we can bring real healing or real love in the lives of people. Where there is hatred, God can bring love where there is a brokenness of relationship he can restore back the relationship 
we have also read the psalm reading this uh, morning that is psalm 119 91 to 96 if you read this psalm carefully we can see the picture of joseph also because though many affliction had come on the way of joseph he had never forgotten the decrees the precepts of god and here in this psalm as it is written if you know had he had not been my delight i would have perished in my affliction i will never forget your precepts for by them you have given my given me life i am yours save me for i have sought your precept the wicked lies in wait destroying destroying but i consider your testimonies i have seen a limit to all perfection but your commandment is exceedingly broad the psalmist is narrating the truth here human perfection is limited but god's word god's strength can enable us to work and behave in an extraordinary manner we have also read Romans 13:8 to 10 where Paul is explaining about the law the law which God had brought Paul is explaining of how the commandment is mentioning about do not harm others do not murder others or steal from others or do not covet anything that is your that belongs to your neighbor but he is also summarizing the same thing which Jesus said summarized saying love your neighbor as yourself if you do that the rest of the commandment will be fulfilled in the same love and finally we have read from Matthew where Jesus is going a step ahead and saying if somebody is slapping you on the right show them the others if anyone is asking from you do not deny but give them remember god loves you and your accuser remember that he allows his sun shine over both the bad and good people his rain is poured out both for the just and the unjust i would like to bring in a very nutshell only three things i would like to say before you when we read out today's uh, theme which is uh, calling us giving us the calling learn to love just as god has loved us learn to love just as god has loved us how god has loved us i would like to bring three points and with that we can also try in our life life to love others the first thing is the unfathomable love of god the unfathomable love of god that means it is uncomprehensible we cannot know it is beyond our reach the love of god is beyond our reach that's why jesus gave the example of the prodigal son the prodigal son when he said the father give me my portion i want to go away from him. and in the jewish time it was considered that any son who is asking for separation they are declaring orally that their father is dead the younger son is saying you are dead for me you are not alive anymore but when the son is returning the father is embracing without any condition when we say god's love is unfathomable god's love is unconditional god's love is unconditional in this earth no matter what love you are living now presently any love maybe within the family within your friend circle within the church it is conditional i am giving good things to my brother and sister i'm certainly knowingly or unknowingly expecting something good to happen to me also that is on condition based but god's love is not based on condition 
God's love is also radical indeed. That means he loves us sacrificially. Sacrifices. He sacrifices. And the greatest sacrifice God has shown is Jesus Christ himself. The unfathomable love of God. Maybe sometime we can pray, Lord, the love that I am not able to understand, which is something beyond than human comprehension, allow me to experience it. We may have our own definition about love based on our own experience because human being, our psychology is tend in such a way what all we touch, we feel, we have seen based on that we assume him. But God's love is beyond that. His definition about love is something very unique, not to harm us, but to benefit us. The second thing is, let us embrace this love without limit. First, understand this love. Then second, this practicing love without any condition and also loving our neighbor and people who are not known to us. Loving one's enemies is, is, enemy is not easy. I don't say it's very easy, very difficult. But as I said, with his grace, with his mercy, we will be able to succeed. The person whom Jesus gives as an example, the Samaritan, the Samaritan man, good Samaritan, who helped a person beside the road, whereas the religious leader, they went, the Levites, and the priest, they did not have compassion. But this person was not known to the, the, the rich man, came near, did not ask him about his nationality, did not ask him, ask him about his well-being, wealth and about his background, but helped him unconditionally. Even he offered him his own donkey to sit down. He paid for him in the inn, the hotel. And that is how he helped him. It is our responsibility also to help each other unconditionally. I remember there was a person in uh, in uh, Guntur who was staying in a village and from that village from that village no one was there to uh, attend the church. And the church was five kilometers far from that village. And there was a worshipper, not a leader, not a pastor, a worshipper who used to go five kilometers to pick that person and bring him to the church. And after attending the church, he used to go and drop him because he was not able to pay, even the auto rickshaw fare also. Loving without any condition. And the third thing is our love should be resulted in action. No matter it is small or big, our love should resemble in action. I have seen, seen in many cases that if the neighbors, the two neighbors are in good condition or they are in good terms, if they are not able to offer much, at least they will offer the curry. Please take this curry I have prepared as a symbol of love, as a symbol that we belong to each other. Our love should be something which is action oriented, not merely preaching and saying it out. Our love should be towards each other, each other's edification and correction. When you love someone, you also correct them. Not in an outraging way, but in a loving way. Correct them. You give them the feedback. You tell them what it feels to you. May the good Lord continue to add his blessing. More than blessing, I would say, continue to add his grace. That if we have not been able to forgive anyone, let us take this morning a decision that, like Joseph, who was entreated, forgave. 
Let us ask God the grace that God, maybe I am weak, but you are strong. Help me to love the way you have loved. Because the word of God says, while we were still sinners, while we were still sinners, Jesus came and died for our sins. May the good Lord add his blessing upon the motion that we have had made.